What a fair sentiment to commit oneself to the, to the uh, mission that Christ had commissioned the apostles first and then following all those believers who followed after them to preach the gospel to all nations. And so that song uh, 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 relates uh, a disposition of, the, of uh, willing to work in the, in the uh, field, in the vineyard, to uh, share the gospel with all. You know, uh, when we think about uh, one's relationship with God and with Christ, we usually think of the, the idea of being spiritual. And we have certain ideas that uh, we would measure a person's spirituality with. And the question is, are these, these valid uh, va uh, measurements, or are they consistent with the scriptures? And that's what I'd like to look at this morning in building spirituality. In Galatians 5.25, Paul wrote to the Galatian uh, uh, congregation, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Um, the idea being, of course being spiritual, that is spiritually minded, uh, looking for a good relationship with the Father. You know, among many, there, there, among many there's a, a desire for more spirituality. There are some expressions that you may have heard, such as, this church or that church is not spiritual, or that person, or that man is not spiritual, or the worship is not spiritual, and, and they're looking for something different, something that they perceive as being more Statements like, I want to worship with that particular group because they are so, so spiritual. And maybe a small group, they meet in their home or whatever. But uh, other things like, he must be deeply spiritual because when he prays and talks, he seems so emotionally close to the Lord. And now as we're getting at, at what some may perceive as what is spirituality. Some sort of emotional uh, uh, disposition. Um, you know, usually those who talk the most about spirituality are often the ones who know the least about Bible spirituality. And so the question, of course, is what is spirituality? And I'd like to make the, note, the point this morning that it's not an atmosphere around us, but rather an attitude within us. It's not a, what's, what the vibes we receive from all around us, but rather it's what's inside of us. What produces spirituality? Is it created by things that are sensational or fleshly in their appeal? You know, uh, such as, I feel so spiritual when I worship in a small group. Well, there's nothing wrong with worshiping in a small group. In fact, wherever we are, whatever number we're in, we should worship according to, in truth and in spirit. Uh, but however, the size of the group does not produce spirituality. In fact, the Bible teaches corporate worship, that is, in a body, in a group. In Hebrews 10.24, the, the writer writes, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. What day? The day that we all assemble together to worship the Father. As, as, we, as, as that first day of the week, the Lord's Day, what we call Sunday, is, is approaching, we should encourage one another to be here so that we can worship all together with one voice. You know, there were over 3,000 Christians in Jerusalem, uh, in the temple area, and upon the establishment of the Lord's Church. And... Were their services lacking spiritually? The Bible tells us that they continued in the apostles' doctrine and prayer and, and fellowship. And, and the question, were they not spiritual? But yet there were so many, three, about 3,000 souls at first. And then as day by day, as those were being saved, the Lord added to them daily. Okay. So, so the number really is not a matter of, of, of uh, establishing spirituality, whether it be a small group or a large group. Does changing the order of worship produce more spirituality? You know, in the Bible, there's no order of worship prescribed. We find the acts of worship, the avenues of worship, where we, we worship the Father in truth and in spirit, but the order of which is not really given. So we, we put in order of things, as God is not the author of confusion, but rather we should do things decently and in order. So we establish, uh, we, we put in order things, the order of worship. In fact, in, in the, the bulletin this morning, there is that, that list of the, the order of worship. And so this is uh, just like a short schedule of how we will, we will worship the Father this morning and, what, and who will be leading the, in those uh, different acts of worship. <clears throat> but uh, it's not given. But, and sometimes as, as we change the order of the worship, it it's, uh, can be refreshing. Um, it can be uh, 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 enjoyable to, to, to alter that. But, you know, the, uh, to believe that these external stimulations make for more spirituality, it's a shallow concept of spirituality. It's, 
Is our level of spirituality actually determined by our arrangements in order of the acts of worship? Well, no, it's not. At least it ought not be. Some think that by dimming the lights or sending, sitting on the floor or holding hands improves spirituality. Sometimes, uh, perhaps at the dinner table when we're, when we're giving thanks for our food, we'll, we'll hold hands. There's nothing wrong with that. But, uh, um, or, or sometimes as a group, we might rather to stand in a circle or sit on the floor in a circle. There's nothing wrong with that either. But to... to, to uh, assign a level of spirituality with that as though this were more spiritual. or um, What it's actually doing is affecting our mood as we might um, uh, uh, perceive things. But being spiritual is not a feeling of, ex of being ecstatic or on cloud nine or any such emotional ride. Um, but does one really believe that his level of spirituality is dependent upon the right lighting, the external mood, manipulating devices, or anything outside of one's own resolving to be spiritual? You know, like the, some places... It has been the practice to dim the lights for the Lord's Supper. Now, does that actually create a mood of spirituality in there? Um, you know, um, the, but that's looking on the externals. When we consider what our worship is, it's something that comes from inside of us as we express our love for the Father uh, and our adoration for what he has done for us and, of course, for our, our Savior, Jesus Christ, as we sing songs of praise, yes, for Jesus Christ, having done what he has done for us, dying for our sins upon the cross, shedding his blood. You know, the denominations and the televangelists, and yes, some congregations of the Church of Christ, have used various methods and techniques to try to drum up sensational spiritualism. You know, it's making it, they're, they're uh, leading spirituality to the level of what, how we uh, perceive, how we sense, you know, what, what our environment is like. They base spiritual, spirituality solely upon the emotional state of the worshiper. Those things which can be manipulated to get the person in the right mood. Okay. Do we have to be in a mood to worship in spirit and truth? That is, do we have to be uh, manipulated and drummed up to get into that level of spirituality that we would, have no, uh, we would not have otherwise? You know, the statement that he must be spiritual because he seems so emotionally close to the Lord. Is our spirituality a matter of our emotions? Okay, as, as we um, um, uh, consider that uh, uh, worshiping God is, is our emotional um, uh, uh, disposition of primary consideration as, as to how we're, how we're appealing to God, that, 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 is that pleasing to God? You know, this redef redefines the meaning of spirituality to mean having an emotional, radiant inner glow. Is our spirituality a matter of our inner glow? Some are just not turned on unless there is some dramatic, unusual, and sensational and emotionally st stirring event. Witness the idea of, of, of uh, what some per, uh, think of the speaking in tongues. Okay? Some believe that speaking in tongues is for us today and that the Holy Spirit, it's proof of the Holy Spirit being in them when they utter these, these uh, uh, I would say, irrational, uh, uh, cacophonic, uh, utter nonsense. <laughs> utter, you know, utter, utter nonsense of utterances. Uh, and as though this were spirituality, in fact, they drum everybody up with a into a wild emotional, almost a frenzy, to, to thinking that this indeed is spirituality. Uh, and so emotionalism and sensationalism, they don't equate to spirituality. And the danger of emotionalism is that it gives one such an euphoric perspective that he would rather have that feeling of euphoria, that, that pleasure, than being right according to the scriptures that it becomes very uh, subjective as to how close I am to God. Some would even go to the far as to say that I wouldn't trade a stack of Bibles, whether a stack or, or a single Bible, for the feeling I have now. I don't care what the Bible says. I just know how I feel. Okay? That's the danger of basing our spirituality upon emotionalism or externals. You know, um, one has substituted spirituality with emotionalism at that point, but that will not get one to heaven, nor does it please the Savior. You know, we, we, we know we are saved not by a feeling that's within us. It's not a feeling. The, the Bible says the Spirit uh, beareth witness with our spirit. The Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit in the sense that the Holy Spirit has taught us what we must do to find eternal life. Okay, and, and it's given to us in His Word and, and as we, as we uh, study the word and put everything together, we come to an understanding we must hear the word of God in order to know what to believe. And then we must believe 
and we must confess Jesus as the Son of God and repent of our sins and be baptized for remission of sins. Where do we get that? From a feeling with inside us? Why, no, we get that from the study, intellectual understanding, the learning. And so our being right is not based upon a feeling. And so when people base their spirituality and their, or their feeling of being saved on how they feel inside, that's, that's not scriptural. In fact, they're lost, never having learned, uh, uh, never, never having come to an understanding of the scriptures that leads one to, to salvation, that makes one wise into salvation. So uh, the idea that, that uh, you know, there's a song, Within my heart, a melody, it's a song that, that, that some sing that I will never lead. You know, um, the idea that, you ask me how I know he lives. You know, the song, he lives, he lives, he lives within my heart. Well, Jesus ought to live within us in the sense that what we put on Christ and so we reflect him and his nature in us as we, as we live each day. But being in our heart, that's usually, I feel so great is what they mean. When they talk about people that, that, that uh, I feel this way in my heart. They usually mean the emotional center. Okay? And, and so the song is, you ask me how I know he lives. Oh, let me tell you how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. You know what they're saying? I feel so good, therefore Jesus lives. Well, that's not the truth. He lives because, because he did rise from the dead, and we know he did because the eyewitnesses told us so. And we know those witnesses are true because they died for their belief and their understanding. They died because they knew Jesus lives. Okay? So the idea of emotionalism or what we feel inside is not a, a sub-objective uh, standard, but rather it's objective, and it doesn't define salvation. And so we need to appeal to the scriptures and what they teach. You know, to this one, that is, spirituality of one's worship depends upon his own personal thoughts. That's the idea. What is spiritual? Well, it's what I, I th let me tell you what I think spirituality should be. That's what they're saying. That spirituality is based upon what they think and what they feel rather than what the scriptures teach us. It's more, and so their personal thoughts are more than anything else, including the scriptures. Being spiritual does not depend upon the position of the body. It does not depend upon the part of worship which comes first or last. It has nothing to do with it being daylight or dark, whether we dim the lights or whatever. It has everything to do with one's attitude toward God and his Savior. That's spirituality. What is true spirituality? Open your Bibles to Mark chapter 12, if you would, please. Mark chapter 12. Beginning in verse 28. And one of the scribes came, having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Now, Jesus had just been speaking with the Sadducees, and notice they had been reasoning together. In other words, they, they were not in an emotional volley. Rather, they were, they were discussing things. And so this, the scribes came. They perceived this. And so they asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is, uh, is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all, uh, is more than all the whole burnt offering and sacrifices. So he had an understanding of the intent of the law of Moses. The law of Moses is not near, merely a, a, a series of acts to do uh, litigation uh, uh, rituals to to uh, uh, participate in, but rather it was more involved with. Uh, proper behavior one to another and, and his love for God and, and his fellow man. And they are more important to God than burnt offerings, which God had commanded him to do. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto thou, him, thou art, not, thou art not far from the kingdom of heaven. And no man after that durst, durst ask him any questions. Any question. So the, Jesus understood from the, uh, he perceived from this man's answer 
that uh, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. Is that spiritual? Being close to the kingdom of God. Of course, the kingdom was not yet established. It would be later established on the day of Pentecost. But in Jesus' ministry, preparing them for the kingdom that was to come. That, uh, and, and as this man expressed to, to Jesus the most important aspects of the law of Moses, and Jesus saw that you are not far from the kingdom. Was this spiritual? Indeed it was. Um, and so the, the idea was, notice what he, he qualified as this, uh, being near the kingdom of God. You shall love the Lord your God. How? How? With uh, um, all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Notice that Jesus man said, he said, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. So we also, as we love God with the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. We are not far from the kingdom ourselves. We are spiritual when we do these things. Our feelings and what stimuli we, we get from our immediate surroundings are not what make us spiritual, nor anyone else. Our spirituality is determined by what is inside of us. What, uh, that is, what our own thoughts, our attitudes, and motivations are in the sense of we don't establish our own standard, but rather our spirituality is not, not what comes out from us from outside of us, but rather what's inside of us, not establishing our own authority, but rather um, our spirituality is, is, is not our, our external um, um, exhibition, I guess is a, is a good way to say that. Um, <clears throat> our spiritual, our spiritual is not to be filled with oohs and ahs we get from our impressions of what is going on around us. Our spirituality is, spirituality is not dependent upon others, but upon ourselves as we express our love for God in heart, mind, soul, and strength. Okay. Paul distinguishes spirituality from the carnal attitude in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, please. As Paul writes to the church in Corinth, says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but unto, as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk, and not, not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. So they should have matured to a point where God, uh, Paul could speak to them as, in a spiritual fashion, not as carnal. Uh, they had not matured as they should have. And so there, as we see, what is spirituality? Well, it's not the carnal mind. It's not what we see that impresses us so much. Uh, it's rather, uh, it's a, it's a uh, having grown in the spirit, in the sense of having grown in the faith. Okay. Spirituality is what Christians are all, are, are all the time. It's what we are. It's who we are. Okay. It's... Uh, um, it's not just what we are at a certain emotional peaks. It's what we are, who we are all the time. It's, uh, it's the love for God and one's fellow man expressed in words and deeds. It's the inner peace that we, f we feel, the inner peace we, we have be knowing the, the, the hope that's, that's in us, um, the uh, 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 confidence we have that our heavenly reward is waiting for us as having, having been faithful to God. It's a uh, patience, a kindness, a goodness shown in this treatment of enemies and friends. It's faithfulness to God in worship, in life, and in attitudes. It's meekness from shown in service and in willingness to be used by others. It is self-control in circumstances while, when the non-spiritual would lose his cool, as we, in a manner of speaking. So it's, it's, uh, our spirituality is exhibited in, in our behavior. Um, uh, Romans 12.2 uh, and be not conformed to this world, but ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we are we are not we do not um, you know uh, conform to what the world uh, thinks is so is, is the right way to be. Okay, you know we can look at, at television commercials and see start to get a, an understanding of the value that the world places on certain behaviors and attributes and characteristics. Um, just look at the commercials, and, and, and so many times people think, well, this is the way I ought to behave. 
this is what I ought to believe. This is the way, this is the way I should approach things. And that's what Paul is saying. Uh, don't do that. Don't be conformed by this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind? What does that mean? As we study the scriptures, we see what God's intentions for us are, what his will for us are, what things are healthful teaching, sound doctrine. And so as we implement these things, our mind is renewed, it's changed. You know, the Bible has the changing power. It, the, the word of God is alive and active, more powerful than any, uh, more sharper than any two-edged sword. And so that's what, the, and it's able to, to discern the thoughts and intents of the heart. And so as we read the scriptures, which is the mirror to our soul, we see what we are like. And so we, renew, we, we adapt our mind, we conform ourselves to the will of God and not to the will of, of the world. And thereby we become spiritual in the, in the way of our, our right relationship with God. The spiritual person is the well-balanced person. The doctrines are important because they teach us God's will. Forms and organizations are important. When I say forms and organizations, I'm thinking about the organization of the church, you know, the corporate body of Christ. Okay? As we come together corporately, together as an assembly of, of the whole body, this is corporate worship. We're not left alone. Rather, we come together and join together in song, singing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, praying to the Father, and, and enjoying the fellowship of the brethren, and thereby uh, being encouraged to keep on keeping on in the faith. So as we consider the forms and organizations are important because they are God's way through which we can express our love and obedience to him. Feelings and emotions are important in the spiritual diet also, but in proper proportions, they help spiritual growth. We are not guided by the emotions. They are not our standard, but rather, certainly there is, there is uh, room for emotional expression, just as that Ethiopian eunuch went away rejoicing when he obeyed the gospel. He was so glad that he found eternal life that it was offered to him. You know that eunuchs were not allowed to go in the temple to make their, their uh, sacrifices. They were not allowed. And yet this eunuch from Ethiopia went, traveled some 1,500 miles to worship in Jerusalem where he could not draw close. Okay. So think of the joy that he experienced that now knowing he was nigh unto God, having been... Uh, adopted as a, as a son of God in his obedience to the gospel. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, and, and of course, when we look at the, read the Psalms, the prayers that, that are found therein about the joy of, of, of uh, uh, being close to God, drawing close to God, and the, and the uh, expressions of, of uh, um, awe about the Father. Okay. And certainly there is room for emotions. We are emotional beings. God is an emotional being. He has anger. He has joy. There's pleasure in him. that He, he finds pleasure in things. So he is emotional. So he has emotions. So, and he, we, we, being created in his image, also have our emotional center. That our, the different emotions that are being expressed in different ways, they are not the standard. But certainly a, a, a proper perspective. And, and that's everything, a balance about our faith. You know, we do not, knowing that the Christian faith is a taught faith. It is learned, and we, we uh, learn what we must do, and our intellect is convinced with the facts and the demands, the commandments of the Bible. Okay. Um, and so, but to, to uh, completely lock out any emotional aspect of our faith creates an imbalance. And so I'm not saying that there's no room for our emotions. I'm not saying that. As we worship God, it can be quite emotional, but that's not what drives us. Okay. We talk about the one who's leading a prayer, and he seems so emotional. Is he spiritual? Well, if he's praying according to the will of the Father and leading us, yes, that's spiritual. And if he happens to exhibit some form of emotion, that's fine if it's appropriate within the context of what was, was being prayed. Okay with the context of what we're doing. It should not be used as a manipulative tool to try to drum emotionalism up from others. Okay? The Bible perspective of our service to God, of course, remember, we, 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 uh, we love God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. 
The heart is that the thoughts or feelings of the mind. Okay, it's the mind. You know, man, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Tonight I'm going to uh, uh, preach on the heart of the Bible, and the different aspects of that as the Bible reveals it to us. When the Bible talks about the heart, what does it mean? And so we'll look at that to see what, when, when we were to love God with all our heart, what that means. And we see that uh, from Strong's definition, the, it's the heart refers to the thoughts the, or the feelings of the mind. Okay? The soul is that breath, okay? the spirit, abstractly or concretely, the animal sentient principle only, thus distinguished on the one hand from another uh, word regarding the soul, which is the rational and immortal soul, and on the other form, which is, comes from another word, which is mere vitality, even of plants. <laughs> Interestingly enough, plants have a vitality. I don't usually think of, of soul, of plants having a soul, but, yet are, but that is, it is a more, uh, uh, some have expressed as that part which ties our spirit to our body. Okay, so that, that sort of like that uh, glue. Uh, these terms does exactly correspond respectively to, the, to another term uh, regarding the heart. Okay, it's the, it's the heart, the life, the mind, the soul, us, you, the various ways that is used. The mind, of course, it's, uh, it's the, the thought, properly the faculty, the mind of its disposition. By implication, it's exercise, imaginations, and mind, and understanding, more the intellect. And of course, the strength is our abilities, our capabilities, the physical abilities that we have to uh, serve God. It's a forcefulness, an ability, a might, a power, or a strength. Note that Jesus and the Sadducees were reasoning together. They were using their mind. Okay. So then, who is spiritual? Well, let's let the Bible speak. As we read in the... Uh, turn to Bibles to Galatians, please. And the text verse we opened with, Galatians 5.25... Um, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Galatians 5.26, let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. As we consider, what does it mean to walk in the Spirit? As he relates on, let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another. We shouldn't do that. Envying one another. We shouldn't do that. Okay? This is walking in the Spirit. Look at verse 16, uh, chapter 5, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led by the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Okay. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This is what life after the flesh is all about. Focusing on these, and the, the fruit of the life in the flesh are these things. So which way do you want to go? Where do you want to go? You know. And it would seem to me that uh, he's contrasting the life and of walking in the spirit and the life of walking after the flesh. Life of walking in the flesh leads to these things. Okay. But the life of walking in the spirit re results in the fruit, bearing the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. These are all wonderful things that we consider things of great Men and women of great character exhibit these fruits the fruit of the Spirit as love, joy, peace, long-suffering, good things, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. What, lo what country will lit litigate against these good qualities? These good qualities build up a nation. These qualities build up a society. These qualities uh, uh, establish a great reputation. And these qualities should be found in all of us as we strive to please our Father. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. This is spirituality. It's not how uh, all the things that affect us from outside. It's the things that we become from inside. Okay, from studying the Word, as we change the renewing of our mind, changes us inside. And therein do we find those that are uh, that become spiritual. 
Uh, the spiritual man is one who has developed into Christian adulthood and maturity. In 1 Corinthians 3, 1, Paul writes, And I, brethren, could not seek, speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So those in Corinth were still uh, um, striving with the, the, uh, the lives they had before they obeyed the gospel. Rather than growing in the spirit that is growing in their knowledge of our Savior, Jesus Christ, they had still, uh, uh, they had not grown, and they were still to be treated as babes in Christ. And so I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet know, now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? So as therein we see that those who are not spiritual are stuck in that old mode, that old man of, of the world, the carnal mindset. But those who are spiritual are those who have grown and matured in Christ and knowledge of our Savior Jesus Christ and are able to take the meat of the, of the gospel message, the meat of the teaching. So one who is spiritual is one whose life is controlled by the Spirit. That Ephesians 5.18 reads, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit which teaches us God's will through His Word. You think about that. We're being taught of the Holy Spirit. Not directly. Not some mystical uh, uh, um, uh, effervescent or, or cloud coming down, but rather we're being taught by the Spirit through His Word, the teachings. You know, he had men write down for Him these words to teach us. So the Holy Spirit is teaching us through his word, and therein we, do we become spiritual. James 3, 13 through 18 reveal what it means to be spiritual. Spirituality is not an atmosphere around us. It's an attitude within us. You know, it can't be separated from our everyday living. What we do day in and day out, how we do it, is more a test of our spirituality than how emotional we may become as we worship. All these things, as we, as we walk, watch ourselves, we see our level of spirituality. Not by how emotionally lather we might become, you know, how excited we might become, but how we live day in, day out. How we wash the dishes, clean the house, mow the lawn, and every other day-to-day -day activity. One builds his own spirituality with a steady, rich diet of God's word. As 1 Peter 2, 2 states, As newborn babes desire the sinful, sincere miracle of the word, that she may grow thereby. How do we grow spiritually? How do we build spirituality? It's by a constant, steady diet of God's word. Learning what his will is for us. And so as we do these things, as we become more in tune with the will of God through the understanding of his word, we become more spiritual. So as we consider our own worship, our spirituality is not a measure of how excited we are necessarily and certainly there's room for, for uh, you know, as, as we consider, when we praise God, express our awe we have for the wonderful things he's done, surely t there are times where we, we are uh, emotionally uh, moved. And there's nothing wrong with that. But our level of spirituality is more in line of what our daily life is. Okay, it's not, it's not mere emotionalism and external uh, what, what show, showmanship, I guess you might say. Well, Jesus Christ came to die on the cross. He came for the very purpose of dying, to shed his blood for our sins, because the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God, or the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The wages of sin. And we know that all need Christ because for all has sinned come short of the glory of God. So that Christ did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. He died in our stead so that we don't have to die. But to uh, partake of the benefits that come from what he has done for us. We must, we must accept that gift. We must accept the gift that God offers to us through his son. And the way to do that, of course, to, of course, believing on him, confessing him as the Son of God, repenting of our sins, being baptized for remission of sins. At that point, 
and our obedience to him, we are accepting that gift and, and uh, confessing that, yes, we need forgiveness of our sins that we ourselves have committed. Now, some of us, all of course, all of us, having obeyed the gospel, we know that it's not... Uh, as much as we may try and we strive to do his will as we grow in the faith, become more spiritual, nevertheless, we still understand we can stumble into sin. And uh, perhaps we have stumbled so far, so consistently, we brought reproach upon the church that uh, we've committed public sins. If there is a reason or a cause uh, that you want to recommit your life to walking in the, in the spirit and not after, after the flesh. If you need the prayers of the congregation, if you need, uh, uh, however we might be able to help you make your relationship with God right, either in obedience to the gospel or, or the prayers of the congregation, come forward as we stand and as we sing.